Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Nanam Paramam Dheyam. Knowledge is supreme. Uh, today I will have uh, more consequences from the refined version of NNL. And the first theorem we will prove is if k is a field, then the polynomial ring in n variables or k has dimension n. That means we need to prove that um, there is a chain of uh, length n plus n in the spectrum of this polynomial algebra and every chain of prime ideals in this should have length at most n. So, first I am trying to produce a, a chain of length n in the spectrum of the polynomial algebra. So, for that observe that 0 is the prime ideal, ideal generated by x1 is the prime ideal, ideal generated by x1, x2 is the prime ideal and so on, ideal generated by x1 to xn, these are all prime ideals. The easiest way to check that these are prime ideals you just go mod that and check the ring is an integral domain and in each one of these case actually the residue class ring is actually the polynomial ring therefore it's, a, it's an integral domain so and the chain is um, at no place there is equality so it's a chain of length n so therefore it's immediate by definition of the dimension that dimension of kx1 to xn is n uh, less bigger equal to n because this is a chain of length n. So, the dimension is a supremum therefore, this dimension is at least n. Conversely, I want to prove that uh, every chain has length at most n. So, start with arbitrary chain p1 p0 contained in p1 and so on contained in PR, this is a uh, in spec of kx1 to xn, this, this is this has length r and we want to prove r is less equal to n. So, to prove r is less equal to n. Now, I am going to apply Nagata's version of NNL to this chain and uh, the ring A is the polynomial ring this and this is a chain in that spectrum. So, Nagata's vision will say that I will find an elements y1 to ym in this which are algebraically independent and when I contract this chain of prime ideals to that it will be generated by the variables. So, there exist so b is k y 1 to y n so that this is integral and y 1 to y n are algebraically independent such that P0 intersected with B, this is generated by uh, y12 y, I will use the same notation H0 then contained in P1 intersection B, this is also generated by the variables y1 to y h1 and so on. And because this is an integral extension, if this chain is proper, then the contracted chain is also proper because the integralness. 
so that is so the last one is this p r intersected b this is y1 to yhr so here just observe that uh, i have used the same n that i explained last time because the uh, because of this integralness the transcendent degrees are same and therefore it is the same n so therefore uh, because the chain is proper the h are increasing h of i plus 1 is strictly bigger than h of i for every i 0 to whatever r so uh, we get a chain like this 0 less equal to h 0 strictly less than h 1 strictly less than strictly less than h h r which is less equal to n because the number of variables is at most n and h are increasing so the one therefore r is less r is less equal to n and therefore dimension of a is less equal to n so that finishes the proof right so um, the thing to note that is from the the classical version of uh, normalization lemma you could not have deduced this because we needed refined where for the chains that was the reason i proved that uh, first okay now the next observation is this is also very important this this in fact shows that the dimension of a finite type k algebra is finite from the definition of a dimension it is not clear a dimension is finite or not but uh, so a is k algebra of finite type assume that a is an integral domain then the dimension of a is transcendent degree of a over k when i write this this is by definition transcendent degree of the quotient field of a over k quotient field of a is an exchange field extension of a uh, k and last time i recalled what is the uh, de definition of a transcendent degree of a field extension it is uh, the number of algebraically independent elements so that when you join them you get an algebraic extension of a quotient field is an algebraic extension of this purely transcendental extension so proof so this this in particular says that the dimension of a uh, finite type k algebra is finite so because this transcendent degree is finite because the quotient field is finitely generated field extension so therefore the transcendent degree can at most be the number of k algebra generators for for the algebra a okay so by normalization lemma we have uh, we can find algebraically independent elements k x1 to xn such that this extension is integral and these are algebraically independent so this is a polynomial algebra let's call this as b we have noted last time that whenever you have integral extension then the dimensions are same so therefore dimension of a equal to dimension of b but b is a polynomial algebra because x1 to xn are algebraically independent therefore this is n 
by earlier theorem and this n is nothing but the transcendent degree because in this case the quotient field of a when i go to quotient field level quotient field of b this is rational function field in n variables and quotient field of a is here and this because this a is integral over b this is algebraic extension therefore indeed this x1 to xn is a transcendent basis so x1 to xn is a transcendence basis of q a over a and we have by we have stated that any two transcendence basis have the same number of elements so therefore transcendent degree of q a over k is n and just now we have put this n is the dimension of a this is very very important uh, 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 for those who want to study algebraic geometry uh, uh, when when we have enough language uh, next time i want to do little bit of uh, language from algebraic geometry because one cannot really avoid it so it is better that we we do it from the uh, basics first and then some more consequences which are geometric in nature that we will we will write down okay now the next one is next one is also very important theorem for many things so that so again k is the field and a is finite k algebra of finite type this is also sometimes i call it a fine algebra over k and suppose we have a prime ideal p uh, let's assume also a is an integral domain assume that k is an integral domain so let p be a prime ideal in a then we have these uh, two things two numbers attached to this p one is height p and the other is dimension of the residue class ring so height p is by definition you know you take the chains of prime ideals which will end at p so p0 contained in p1 etc etc pr which is p this is a length of uh, r length is r ending at p and you take the supremum of such r that is called the height of p on the other hand we have also this dimension of the residue class ring that means you start with a chain at p and take this is a chain of prime ideals in a in spec a and if you take their supremum here that you get a dimension of the residue class ring so we want to know what is the relation between the three numbers dimension a height p and dimension of a by p and obviously one if i take the chain which ends at p and continue with the chain obviously i'm going to get a chain of length their sum so therefore dimension is at least the sum but the assertion here we want to prove is actually it is equal so this is 4 so the assertion is so then dimension of a 
equal to height p plus dimension of the residue class ring a by p proof as i said it is clear that dimension of a is bigger equal to height p plus dimension a by p so let us let me give this height p as the name h i want to prove the reverse in inequality so i am going to apply uh, nagata's version of nnl so i apply nagata's version of nnl to a to the ring a so you need uh, a fine algebra a that is a and i need a chain also so but i chain chain i just take p just only one element so it's a length zero chain so nagata's version will say there exists a polynomial ring inside this so that is let's call it b is k x1 to xn and this is integral such that this p when i contract to b it is generated by variables so p contracted to b is generated by x1 to xr this is a polynomial ring polynomial algebra that means x1 to xn are algebraically independent this is for some r bigger equal to 0 first of all note that the dimension of a is n because this is integral and now the next thing to note is this b is a polynomial algebra therefore note that b is an integrally closed domain polynomial ring is a ufd and ufds are integrally closed that is maybe the shortest right so it's integrally closed and integral homomorphism then i want to say the going down holds going down theorem holds for this extension he continues see last time i recalled what is going down right so the going down theorem one of the consequence there is if i take the prime ideal p in a and contract to a uh, contract to b then the height will not change so in particular if p is a prime ideal in a and if i take q to be equal to the contraction of p to b then height of p equal to height of q this is very simple to check from going down but height of q is height of uh, q is generated by x1 to xr because when we have chosen this extension so that contraction of p is generated by x1 to xr so this is height of ideal generated by x1 to xr which is r that is because you definitely have a chain so this one you definitely have a chain which starts at 0 ideal generated by x1 ideal generated by x1 x2 this is a proper chain all the way to ideal generated by x1 to xr so therefore height of this q is at least r but on the other hand 
I want to I want to check that the height is exactly R. So what we need to check now is height of Q cannot be bigger than R. If it is bigger than R, then we should get a contradiction. Okay. So if height is bigger than R, then look at dimension of B. which is bigger than equal to height of q plus dimension of the residue class ring b by q but we are assuming height of q is at least r so this is strictly bigger than r and this residue class ring is a polynomial ring in n variables mod the ideal generated by polynomials up to x1 to xr so it will disappear uh, the variables x1 to xr will disappear and the remaining variables will be xr plus 1 xr plus 2 up to xn and those are n minus r in number so this dimension is n minus r we have proved that the dimension of the polynomial ring over a field is the number of variables so this is at least uh, this is exactly n minus r which is n so this shows that the dimension of b is big strictly bigger than n but that is not possible because dimension b is n so not possible so and what is the dimension of the residue class ring dimension of a by p a by p this is dimension of b by p intersection b because when i go mod i get an integral extension this is because a by p and this a, a b by x1 to xr this is an integral extension this is integral because the original extension a to b was integral so i just gone passed on to the residue class rings so this is integral therefore dimension of this equal to dimension of this and dimension of this is exactly n minus r because this b1 to uh, the residue class ring is nothing but k xr plus 1 to xn so therefore when you add up height of p plus dimension of a by p height of p is r oh i messed it up i called it h sometime so it's correct here this is not h this is r let us call it okay so therefore this is r plus this is n minus r which is n and which was nothing but the dimension of a because again integralness so that proves the theorem right okay